Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class of today. Today is Monday and I know you're tired. I hope you have rested very well during the weekend. So we're going to start. First thing, of course, is to check about the platform. So here is it. And uh, you will see here the question. This is the question for today. And then uh, we have to do the homework 2.11. Uh, why is it important to invest on a trained workforce? Select true or false to the following statements. So true or false. And the second part, read the generalities of a list of training related to different jobs. Then select the job described, okay? So here you are going to find options for you to choose the correct ones, okay? And let me just check one thing. So it's going to be, let's see, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. For Wednesday, we have to be done with the midterm review and practice. So it means that for Wednesday, we need to finish the midterm tests. It's very important. So you know that already. And of course, if you have questions, just let me know. And of course, it will be a pleasure to help you. Okay, so now we're going to check the attendance. Just a few people right now. I know that there are some problems because of the rain on internet and energy. So let's mm -hmm. hope everybody can join. Okay, Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present, present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present, teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Zuleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Ok. So we are going to start, of course, the class of today. So up and just go to the reading of day. Okay, so today we're going to speak about dogs. No, it's not true. Seven types of employee training and when to implement each. So it's a nice article, this one. So we're going to check into that thing. Let's see, um, Jose Osmin, could you please help me with the introduction? Sorry, teacher. So can I try next? Oh, okay. So oh. after that, yeah, yeah. no problem. Uh, Juan Miguel Brand. Thanks. Okay, teacher. Perfect. Uh, employee training is a must at any organization, but employee training is often viewed as necessary, even something read by employees and mandated by employers. Even worse, a lot of training misses the mark. In fact, 70% of employees feel they don't have the right skills for the job. And a recent survey found employers still have many blind spots when it comes to L&D training. This doesn't 
have to be the case. Perfect. What did you get from this? Uh, uh, I don't know, maybe it's about uh, for training, but uh, um, no, no teacher, I, sorry, sorry, I don't, I, I don't understand in, in this case. Don't worry, don't worry. So yeah, the first part is like, uh, well, employee training is a must at any organization. So we know that in any company, we, uh, the employees, we need to go to training. But the thing is that sometimes employees, they feel training is not good. It's like, oh my goodness, we need to go to the training. So they feel that it's, it's not good training. That is something that is mandatory. So we need to go to training. And uh, well, that is a feeling that might be happening in certain areas and certain companies. Uh, another thing that is happening is that 70% of employees feel they don't have the right skills for the job. So that is a lot. So maybe, yes, you have some skills, you have some knowledge, but of course you need something else, right? And uh, well, that is kind of the, the case for this one. Let's check some vocabulary. Uh, what is to be a must? Something mandatory. mandatory. Yeah, you don't have a choice, right? You have to do it. Good. And what is something evil? Something bad. Something bad, something like not good, right? Something like that. And mean. Mean, good. What is something dread? Fear. Okay, very good, perfect. And it says even worse. Let's see. I don't think there is any other here. What is dread? I'm sorry. Okay, could you please repeat, Danny? What is dread? Like a fear, something that is ah, fear. Okay, okay, thank good. you. Good. And what is blind spots? Missing things. Missing things, like a gap, right? Good. Gap, uh-huh. Good. So it says, we service 600 learners, and this is what they say. What did they say? So it says there is, uh, there's no one size fits all approach of training, to training. There are numerous types of employee training. Each one should for different situations. Using the right type of employee training at the right time can result in a more engaging, effective learning process for your team and better overall business outcome. So this is an introduction on the things that we're gonna to check today. So the first one, it says, there is no one size fits all. Do you remember what is that? Like universal. Okay. Like one standard, like one standard. Okay, perfect. So yeah, like something that is good for everything, right? So that doesn't exist. And well, actually we checked at the beginning that we have different ways of learning. So, and so we need to tailor, right? We need to tailor the trainings in a way that the, variety of people that we have in the company is going to take advantage of it. So it's not that easy. It's not just to provide a train. And it says using the right type of employee. What well, the thing is that we need to be careful about the kind of train that we are going to deliver for our employees. No other words here, I guess. So number one, it says leadership training. Uh, let's see, Anna Claudia, could you please help me with this? Of course, all the, the paragraph? Uh, yes, please. Okay, leadership training. Leadership training is a type of soft skill training that focuses on interpersonal abilities, 
but with an emphasis on leadership qualities and skills that directly influence leading others. Leadership training and manager training are often overlooked, but have a tricky down effect. A bad manager often results in a bad experience for everyone. Leadership training typically builds on foundational skills, helping employees on, I haven't seen that word, on communication skill, project management strategy, and of course, leadership itself. Leadership training may also build on other types of skills like crisis management of any kind of technical knowledge required to use management specific software or tools. It's worth pointing out that leadership training isn't a replacement for career coaching, but can be supplemented by this valuable type of ongoing training. Career coaching helps employees get the most out of their time as working professional, regardless of role or aspirations. If someone's interest in leadership, coaching can definitely play a role in guiding them to that role. Perfect. What did you get from this? I thought that the training for managers, it would be the not different than career coaching. But career coaching is like the mentoring time, right? For another, another in the same position. Okay. Um, they are, the reading says that the leader training is uh, are like overlock, like, uh, I don't, I understand this like, uh, they are in the same frame, like in the same type. Okay. There is no option. Mm -hmm. It's not open, something like that. Okay. Uh, and sometimes uh, when there is a bad manager training or coaching, it will be affecting the rest of the, the ones that will be under their leadership. For that reason, it's not the same trainings that career coaching in the leadership training. That is what I understand. Okay, perfect. So yeah, this is like the first kind of training that we can deliver, not only for the staff on the top, right? So uh -huh. we can also provide that to any people. Remember that we want that employees, they want to, to stay in the company and grow within the company. So, so this is something that we can deliver of course, in different levels with different, in a different way. So this will be like a career path? Yeah, like a career ah, path, okay. something like that. And uh, of course, I mean, if this is for all employees, it's going to be for that one, for career path, or uh, if- For it's employees going to be, that wants to be leaders. Exactly. Or ah. it can be for the leadership already that they are already leaders, but sometimes they need some other skills, right? Interpersonal ah, skills. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, let's see some vocabulary. Uh, what is to influence others? When people want to do what you are doing because they feel there will be good influence or bad influence. Yeah. And in this case, it's supposed to be good influence. They Make the effect. Uh huh. It's an effect. They want to do the same because they feel good. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, what is overlooked? Yes. And you, you miss a detail or forgot a detail? I don't know. Yeah. So when this situation overlook is like when, I mean, when the employees, they, they, are told that they are going to go to a leadership training. It's like, oh my goodness, again, to one of those. So people, they don't, uh, go something ahead. Will be something that couldn't be, couldn't be a speak, uh, a skip. Okay, yeah, not able to skip. So something like mandatory is not, it's not like good for them, but it says have a trickle down effect. So what is this, a trickle down effect? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, a trickle down effect, it means that if we do not correct the things that are not good in the leadership, or if we do not train the future leaders, they will become bad managers. And at the end, that is going to cause an impact for everyone and for the whole company. So even though some people might believe that this is not good, it's something that is necessary, right? So we need to, of course, depends on the way of the training and how it's going to be provided. It's not just to stay there in front of people and saying, be a good leader or anything like that. Right? Ooh, okay, uh, let's see, there were some other words. Uh, what is crisis management? The way you manage the problems in your uh, work, maybe. Oh, sorry. Good, perfect. So that is it. When you're a leader, I mean, when anybody else is know what to do, everybody's going to come to you, right? What do I do here? So you need to provide a good guidance and also a convincing one. It's not that you are going to say, mm, I don't know, man. So you need to know. So, and that's why you are there, right? Most of the time, managers or leaders are the ones who handle these kind of situations. Good. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, this one, hone, what is hone? There's some, I see that word. <laughs> you know, it's not home, it's horn. <laughs> horn, yeah. So it's, uh, there is always some words here that are kind of strange. That's why we're doing this. So horn is like, like sharp, to sharpen your skills. So to get more skills that are more detailed, more specialized, some like that. And let me see. Uh, there is no other, I guess. No. Good. So when to implement leadership training? Let's see, Jose Wilfredo, could you please help us with this? Yes, of course. When to implement leadership training? Because leadership training typically builds on foundational skill, it's the best to offer his training to employees who are on track to become a manager. For those recently promoted into a leadership position, if you are regularly conducting one of ones with your team, ask them about their career goals. If anyone, anyone's interest in a leadership position, it's a good idea to meet with the rest of the leadership, uh, with the rest of the leadership team, and discuss whether leadership training is right for the person at this time. Good, what did you get from this? Um, uh, this is typically for a leader that need to, need to discover that someone else or some member of the her or his team wants to be in the same position of them. Okay. Uh, so if that person, maybe when you have a one one -on one uh, like you, maybe you could ask us if we want to be a, a, a leader or a, yeah, a leader or manager or something like that. Or if we want to promote to another, we want to be promoted to another position. Um, maybe uh, we could answer that, that question like yes, and you can help us to, uh, you can help us to achieve that position. Very good, perfect. So as you can see, it's more for that kind of people. Sometimes it's also a good idea for for us to deliver that one to the leaders that are already there in the position so they get new methods, new points of view about what they're doing. Good. So let's check some vocabulary. I don't think there are many here. 
are on track? What is to be on track? On the way to. On the way to. So you are on the way to become a leader, a manager. So, yeah. uh, okay, good. One on ones, of course, you know what's that. Okay, question for everybody. What is to be a leader in your own opinion? Uh, maybe someone to have the knowledge and try to organize, um, for example, in a for example, in a company, try to organize different activities to cut the goals according to the objectives or according to the policies, and try to uh, give um, some or a few knowledge to the rest of the group. Very good, perfect. That is very, very nice. Any other opinion? About In my opinion, maybe it's not only the knowledge. If not, that is a person that maybe can um, um, manage a group of people uh, with different, uh, with different behavior and can, res and can resolve whatever situation that will happen. Very good, perfect. Attitude, right? The behavior is very important as well. Nice. Any other opinion? Oh, who is and For me, mm -hmm. uh, the manager is the one in charge of uh, to develop the performance or of the employees that are under his or her control, right? That is also that's what I really real for me. Yeah, that is so true. So since uh, you are in charge of the department, you want everybody to develop themselves to to show the potential, right? That they have not only in this position but for the future. So you will be able to help them become something, something else. Good. Somebody at else. The end, at the end, as much as as much they do a great job, you will do a great job. Exactly. That is it. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Heidi. Any any other opinion? I guess everybody and a other person was saying something else. Um, in, in my opinion, um, a leader is, uh, is someone who uh, inspire you or influence and in other people uh, get uh, get the results that it should to to do. <laughs> Uh, it must to do, but in a way that all feel um, all the all the employees you feel um, involved, compromised, and and they want to do it. They they know that is it has to be done. Uh, um, and just that and and um, and also uh, the leader is is who develop others. Very good, perfect. So you see that there are many things that a leader is, right? So somebody that have the knowledge to make decision, uh, also that develops other people, inspire, that is very important. It has to be somebody that you say, I want to be whenever I, I become a leader, I want to be like this leader, right? Like this person. So there are many things that are involved. Good. Any other? Okay, if not, we're going to go to the next, that is says compliance training. So this is going to be for, let's see, Heidi, could you please help me with this number two? Sure, compliance training. Compliance training is any kind of training every employee must undergo. This kind of training can range from safety to security to technical and beyond. Compliance training should cover anything your employees must know, either for legal reasons or to ensure the company runs effectively. This means compliant training can be vary a great deal from a company to company. 
a restaurant will have drastically different compliance training than a tech startup. Often, compliance training not only covers responsibilities directly tied to the job, but additional matters like safety and security. For example, anything that pertains to occupational safety and health administration, OSHA, guidance needs to be covered in compliance tra training for legal reasons. If your company has specific rules around locking up the office at night using certain printers or so on, that should be covered in compliance as well. If you're ensured that to cover in compliance training, speak with your employees and ask about their biggest struggles and what information they wish they had sooner, anything repeatedly brought, brought up is likely compliance training material. Good, what did you get from this? What I get from this is that um, about compliance, it's not something that is like a, like um, the company's policies. These are legal things you can't avoid. You have to go through it because um, you can you can make an exception with policies, but not with compliance or, or, or legal stuff. Very good. So yeah, that is it. Compliance are things that you need to you need to do. That I mean. Oh, Depending, sometimes it's all the companies, sometimes it's just a few departments or a few people, but sometimes because of legal reasons, because of procedural legal, I mean, for example, we were discussing before that- It's not negotiable. Exactly. Yeah, we were discussing that banks every year, they have to deliver money laundry uh, training, right? Even when people have been in the company 20 years and they know about that one, they have to go to the training, and check into this all the information that is related to that mm -hmm. one and that's it right i mean it's not that they exactly. are exactly it's a legal request uh -huh, it's a legal thing and then you are certified everybody signs a paper and receive like a diploma that they have complied mm -hmm. with that one and they can continue so they can show that to the to the uh, superintendency of the financial system here in Salvador, for example. So everybody is training this one, so they know what they're doing. Good. Good, let's check if there is any word here. Uh, what is undergo? Experience. I'm sorry? Experience. Experience, yeah, it could be something like that. It's like, it's something we'll like, through. I'm sorry? To go through, yeah, must very good. Go through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be done, right? Very good. Let's see any other. I don't see any other. What it says uh, tied to the job. What is to be tied? Like a hook. Related to the yoke. Like right. a union. Nice, perfect. Hooked. Uh, uh, yeah, it's linked. It's like it's part of the job, right? Good. And let's see. What is a guideline? All the process or the steps to follow up. Very good. Mm -hmm. So there. Uh -huh. Partners. Partners, very good for you to know how to do something. Then it says if your company has specific rules around locking up, what is locking up? To assure something, very good. So whenever, for example, in this case, it says locking up the office at night. So the way that you are going to close, not only the physical office, but the systems and things in that one, right? And let's see. I don't think there is any other. Oh, what is to be, or, or to struggle with something, struggle. Yeah. 
like problems like Concern. problems stop yeah so when you are not sure what to do so it's like a trouble doing something and you are struggling and what to do very good and very good i don't think there is any other okay the other part is going to be for let's see uh danny could you please help me with when to implement compliance training yeah sure good when when to implement compliance training you should roll out compliance training anytime core tools are updated new harassment policies policies are put into place security measures change and so on if new information or responsibility impact your your company ability to function both efficiently and negatively it's time it's time for compliance training plain and simple good what did you get from this um this uh this tell you when when you have to uh, to implement the, the the compliance training for example um new policies or new um or something come up for legally for example new normative um, you have to um, implement that or update your um, compliance training you have Very to good. you always have to have to um to comply <laughs> Compliance with the compliance training because it's something <laughs> mandatory. And there are many things that um, that um, that makes you to update it or implement. Very good. Definitely, you need to comply with the compliance training. That is a good one. And yeah, so sometimes there are procedures that you need or trainings that you need to deliver once a year, once a quarter, once a month, depending on how, how is the compliance that the company has to have. Sometimes whenever the leadership, they see that there are some problems in the procedures, then they need to take the training. So maybe it's not mandatory, but they need to be sure that everybody's doing the step-by-step yeah. I can relate to this. And um, for example, in bank, um, there are many, many, many mandatory uh, courses uh, or training. Uh, as you say before, mo mo uh, laundry, money laundry, uh, risk, operational risk, uh, security, information security, business continuity, and so on. So many, so many, so many. That is true. I mean, there are some industries that have more things to comply with than all the others. For example, also doctors or in the health industry, sometimes they have to follow certain procedures. They have to comply with some certain things so they can provide the service that they do, right? So that would be it. Let's take some. Uh, things harassment what is harassment like arrangement i'm sorry like like arrangement or not arrangement it's not like arrangement no, no, no. no. it's a type of violation it I heard that word associated with another one, for example, sexual harassment. I don't know if that is true. It's related. Actually, yeah, harassment can be any kind of misbehavior that a person within a company has with other people. Sometimes they, uh, I don't know, imagine that a, a, a person, mm -hmm. a man has five people but he's always pushing just one and saying, you cannot do this very well. And they are providing negative feedback too much. Sexual harassment is also something that is- uh, Someone annoying. So uh, when something they are annoying. annoying. So when, do you believe that somebody's 
is seeing you or telling you things that are not proper things like that. So that is harassment. And all the companies, they have policies for that one, for that kind of misbehavior. Um, almost always, when you see something like that, you can go to the human resources and you can discuss, you know, I feel this. And then the human resource is going to come and try to check what's going on, what's happening, right? So uh, let's see. And um, there is no other, I guess. Okay. So let's go to number three, onboarding training. I guess that the title says everything, but anyways, we're going to read. Let's see. Yvonne, could you please help me reading this one? Onboarding um, training. Onboarding um, training covers any topic essential to starting out at your company. While similar to compliance training, onboarding training is specifically tailored around the new employee experience. Onboarding training should cover the essentials all new employees need to know. Instructions to tool or software communication practices, support resources, who to contact about particular issues, and so on. If a piece of knowledge or a tool is necessary for an employee's first days and weeks at your company, it's onboarding training material. While onboarding training needs to cover essential info, it's important this type to employee training isn't overwhelming. Cover only what employees need to, new, to know to get started. Then map out the rest of their learning experience. Too much information at once will lead to employee panic and drive away new talent. Lastly, onboarding training needs to include resources that your employee may refer to Later, as needed, consider creating a company wiki or something similar to keep internal information handy. Good. What did you get from this? Okay, I think that this is the material that new employees need to know. For example, um, safety, for example, procedures, um, policies. Um, or for example, uh, software or uh, the activities that they have to do in the in the position, and, and you need to be careful with the type of material or the quantity of the material that you give to the new employees, because uh, too much information is dangerous. Uh, for the new people because you can cause panic to the new employees if you give a lot of material and you have to, you only have to uh, give um, the essential the essential material for the new employees very good, perfect. Thank you, Yvonne. Actually, that is very important. I mean, onboarding training is one of the most important training because for new employees, they sometimes they don't know what they're going to do, where to go, where to look for information, something like that. And uh, it's very important that you present the most important things so they can start doing their job, but not to provide a lot of information because as Yvonne said, it might be not good. I mean, if they see a lot of things that they have to do maybe they are going to to decide to not to continue with the job right so that is not something that the company needs so let's check some uh, words let's see there are not many here it says that it's similar to compliance training so because it's specifically tailored around the new employee experience okay and uh, let's see who to contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I, I have a new word here or something for us to discuss. 
No, there are no. Okay. When to implement onboarding training? Ada Cáceres, could you please help me with this? Is it possible for you, Ada? When to implement a burning training? On burning training should only be implemented during the onboarding of the new employees. Uh, so if an uh, employee to start with your company and have a burning training ready, uh, ready to go, ready to go. The training should walk them to only what they need to know during the early weeks. Are they adding more information as time goes on? Good. What did you get from this? Uh, for me, teacher, if I think the onboarding is the is the process of the. It's necessary to introduce the new, new employees within and the in the new company. Uh, the definition does is not refer only the to start this day of work. Uh, for the many companies, consider that process extends from the thinking of the contract contractor contract. Uh, until the on the or the trial period for me. Very good, perfect. That is it, right? So new employees are coming to the company and we need to be ready to receive them with the most relevant information. information. Sometimes uh, yeah, sometimes it's a good idea to bring people from different departments and tell, well, we do this and you can if you need information or if you need something well, we're going to be there so everybody is involved in this kind of yes. in this kind of uh, training so they feel welcome and they feel secure right that they, everything is going to be well let's see if there is any word i don't remember but i don't think so no there are not any good technical training that's going to be for a uh, giselle Okay, number four, technical training. Technical training focuses on the use of any technology or tools at a company. If a position requires certain software or use of a particular printing device, technical training should cover that. Technical training can vary in length depending on the tool or software covered. In some cases, technical training can be a quick one-time course or presentation, but it's also possible technical training is much longer and more involved. Good, what did you get from this? That maybe sometimes uh, some positions don't need this type of training. Uh, you can apply this training only if the position needs or is a must for the position. For example, some um, positions uh, are more like administrative and maybe it doesn't, these people doesn't have um, like, like, um, um, it's more maybe like a paperwork than maybe the use of software or stuff like that. So uh, if the company the company needs to uh, analyze if this training is uh, necessary, but I understand that if it's, if it's not necessary, you can avoid or you can just don't do this. Very good. Perfect, so that is it, right? So technical training is for specific positions. Sometimes it's very expensive, depending on the kind of software that we're going to use for this uh, position or for this job. So definitely uh, it's for the people that really, really need them. For example, one of the most, the departments that have more technical training definitely is the IT department, right, of a company. So they, they have a lot of training, sometimes even with servers and things that are kind of very expensive. Let's see if we can find any word uh, for us to practice. What is that? 
What is a device? Maybe an equipment, but uh, uh, tiny equipment as a USB flash or something like that. Very good. A gadget? Yeah, a gadget, gadget maybe. Good, perfect. That would be it. good. And there is no that I think. Okay, when to implement technical training? That is going to be for Raymond. Could you please help us with that one, Raymond? Hello, teacher. Hello, how are you? Uh, with uh, when to implement technical training? Yes, please. Let me see. Oh, technical training isn't in always mandatory as some West positions may require minimal or no knowledge of company tools. So it's possible that not everyone at your company will need technical training. Like onboarding training, you want to avoid over, I don't know, over overwhelming well -meaning, well -meaning employees. Technical trainer is required for a role. Don't impose, impose it. Uh, technical training should be revised yearly to ensure your team isn't forgetting any valuable information. It's also important you revisit this type of the employee training wherever there's an update to the, to, to the tools or software. This will then fall under mandatory training. Very good. What did you get from this? Um, when implementing technical training, uh, so I think um, uh, the company may uh, um, implement a technical training when uh, when um, install some of day on their system, something like that. Yeah, whenever it's needed, right? So it's not for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah only not... to person to, um, let me see, uh, interact what? Interact. Uh, okay, uh, only to person to interact to the system. Yeah, definitely. So there are people that they actually do certain things, right? They actually manage certain information or handle some some software, some pieces of things that are very specialized. So of course they need technical training. Good. Let's see if we can thank find you. any words. Uh, thank you to you actually. Let's see, what is to require? require you require something petitions okay very good uh, what is avoid someone to uh, no something that exists in a moment but then you need to eliminate okay yeah, might be something like that. Yeah, it's something that you don't want to go through, right? So you avoid a street, you avoid a kind of job, things like that. Or what is, I'm sorry? To escape from. Yeah, so you, yeah, uh, prefer not to, right? Prefer not to do something or go through something. What is to impose? something mandatory mandatory something that you say you this are. yeah you need to do right you must do this or the, the opposite you don't have to do this good what is revisited
in this context, maybe like a review with it. Very good. So you need to go again and review the procedure and then provide the training again, right? So you need to do that once and again. And there is no order. Very good. The next one says product training. Good. This is going to be for, let's see. Um, Francisco Eduardo. Hello. Yeah. Is it possible for you to read? My teacher. Okay. Yeah. Number five. Okay. Uh, product training. Product training covers any product or service you offer. Why? Briefly. Touching on the selling point of each product training is typical given to salespeople, customer service reps, and anyone working on the product team. Product of server training teaches employees about the feature of each product or service. Product training is different from technical training, as employees are taught only how to use the product, the product or tool. Instead, employees are taught about the unique selling proposition for each product or service offered by the company. Product training generally covers the specific of the product, like, like its many manufacturer, warranty and commonly asked questions. The goal of product training is to ensure employees understand what their company offer, but for internal and customer facing purpose. The status of employee training is an ideal replacement for service for, for sales training, as the emphasis isn't about selling the product. Good, perfect. What did you get from this? Uh, I don't understand. I understand that uh, this kind of training uh, refer to uh, the employees now uh, uh, the product and other view and the view for uh, a selling. Uh, I think, uh, for example, if uh, people uh, ask to the employees uh, about a specific uh, benefit uh, for this product that they, the company uh, sells. Very good, perfect. So yeah, that is it, right? So of course, if you are going to produce a, or some products, if you are going to sell some products, definitely you need to understand what is that product what is that for why this is better than the other one you need to believe in the product if you don't believe in the product you i mean it's useless that you're there right so this is very important so very very important good now let's check some vocabulary uh, let's see briefly what is briefly shortly Okay, shortly, nice. And uh, let's see. Maybe maybe this word is like uh, quickly. Yeah, very fast, right? Not that extent. Okay, okay. Thank Good. You. And let's see. I remember there was another one. What is tout? The past, the past of teach. teach. Very good, the pass of teach. Good. And let's see if we can find another one. I don't think there is any other, no. Okay, so when to implement product training. Marcos, could you please help us reading this? Okay, when to implement product training. Okay, product training should be implemented for any employee who interact with your products or service, or those 
in customer facing roles. If someone going to assist customer in their role, product training is special in format. In the event someone will work with customers, product training should be a part of onboarding training for that role. If an employee won't interact with customer in their role, product training could be potentially be left for after onboarding. Again, this depends on whether product knowledge is required for them to do their job. Good, what did you get from this? Okay, um, um, that sometimes when, when uh, we arrange a, a training for, for, for any problem, uh, we have to think about if the, if the product or the training will be useful for some employees because in the, in the example of that, during if um, it said that uh, when the customer is not, when the employee is not uh, in, in interact with the product, sometimes not necessary to, to train that employee. He could be left after the onboarding. So depends on where the product knowledge is required to do, for the employee to do their job. So sometimes it's not completely necessary to, to plan a, a training for, for one product or service. If the employee uh, doesn't need to do his job. Very good. Perfect, yeah, actually that is it, right? So it's uh, something that depending on the role of the employees, you are going to get them involved more in product training. I guess everybody has to know about the product, but the ones that are going to sell the product or are going to provide any kind of feedback to customers or provide any explanation, they need to know, know more about the products, definitely. Uh, let's see if we can find some words. Um, I don't think there are many here. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, we're going to, uh, I guess we're going to read the other one and then we're going to check the, the attendance. Okay. Sales training. This is for Roxana. Okay. Sales training. Sales training is similar to product training but goes a step further and emphasize the selling points rather than the granular product details. Unlike product, product training, sales training focus on, on how employees can effectively advocate for the product, navigate difficult customers questions and promote unique Fishers. Ultimately, sales training should equip your team with the knowledge they need to actively make and sell the product. Sales training often utility, utilities? Utilizes. No. Utilizes, thank you. Sales training often util, utilizes. That's correct? Yeah, utilizes. Utilizes, thank you, role paying to help employees see firsthand how they can sell the product or service. This involves employees pretending to be salespeople engaged with customers. Going back to forth with questions and answers. Good, what did you get from this? Uh, let me see. Well, I get that in this point is similar to so uh, um personal um I don't know how how do you say that uh, it's like a personal um develop I don't know maybe when you 
are to uh, close to your um, client or your customers and try to personalize the, um, the sales, for example, and maybe uh, that training is focused on that because uh, I imagine that the, the, the sellers in that point is the face of the is the fa are the face the the company in front of the rest of the people. For example, uh, when the when you uh, need to sell some uh, policies, I, I'm working in a insurance company, and I imagine that when the sellers try to try to uh, sell the, the policies, uh, they, they um, develop a good environment with the clients and try to uh, explain with real um, travels to, I don't know, to try to get the sales at the end, maybe with, um, regular or normal situation a day and maybe that type of, of training uh, try to give that maybe that human position because you not only need to sell or need to get the goal you need to personalize the, the um, product maybe with uh, your normal life or the real life that the customers and try to get some sales about that. But uh, that training, I, I imagine that give that, um, I don't know how to say it. The training Thank you. Yeah, I, I imagine that this, this, this type of training try to uh, give some skills to personalize the act in front of the customers. Okay, That's very it. good. Okay, yeah, actually this is linked with the product, right? So the product is just about the product, what the, what the product does, how is built the product, what are the benefits of the product, but the sales training are like, like techniques, methods for them to be able to, to sell actually, to provide this kind of uh, information to the customer. So they say, yes, I want this one. So that is interesting. Uh, and uh, let's check some uh, words. Further, what is further? Like more. Far. Very good, far, nice. What is to emphasize? Try to be focused on a specific topic. Okay, very good, that's good. And granular says, what is that? Something very, in, in a very detail. Very good. Very detailed, so nice. What is unlike? Maybe dis dislike, no? Uh, no, dislike is different than uh, unlike. Something yeah. different? Something different, yeah, very good. And dislike is something that you don't like. Advocate, what is advocate? Um, okay, advocate, advocate, uh -huh. advocate could be like uh, when you are trying to uh, giving your opinion in order to other people uh, believes that something is uh, like this or like that. Okay, very good. So yeah, it's a way for you to elaborate what you are going to say. So 
at the end, uh, the point of view that you have is going to be shared with other people, right? So, good. What is to promote? Uh, what is to promote? Get some better. Mm, that is like promotion, but not in this case. A promote is when you are trying to convince people, right? To purchase. When you are okay. doing like marketing. Push. To push. Very good. And let's see. First hand. On the first terms, maybe? The first terms, yeah, it could be something like that. So you are face to face with the customers, right? So you do you know, you know what's going on there. So that would be it. Okay. What is to, good, what is to pretend? Like assume? Assume. Fake it till you make it, they say, right? Okay, to when to, I'm sorry? No, to cheat. <laughs> yeah, that is it, to, to cheat, okay. So when to implement self-training, Maria Alejandra? Sorry, teacher. <laughs> And when to implement sales training. Mm -hmm. Sales training should be incorporated into onboarding training for sales people as it's essential for them to do their jobs. If an employee won't regular, regular, regularly interact with customers in their role, but could benefit from this type of employee training, you might be safe saving the training for after onboarding process. Good, what did you get from that one? Uh, okay. Mm, and, in in when uh, the person's uh, work or uh, and uh, sales is necessary that these persons to interact with uh, the customer and put their role try to do and and say for uh, the seller that how the benefits uh, or see that how by of training to is necessary for that this person in specific for to have more sales but it, the first time or the first step is to see how interact with uh, the seller or customers hang with the customer and then decide how the method is at the correct Perfect, that is it. So yeah, definitely. So this is going to be more for salespeople. And uh, this should be part of the onboarding training whenever we are hiring salespeople. So that would be it. Let's check some words. I don't think there are many here. We are into our customers. Yeah, I don't think. Okay, now we're gonna make a pause and we're going to check their attendance because it's uh, past nine. Okay, uh, Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Present, teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. 
Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. And Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good, perfect. So let's continue. Uh, let me just check. Okay, Fernando. Got you. Okay. So number seven, anti-bias and diversity training. Okay, this is going to be for Fernando. Well, I guess it's not possible right now, right, Fernando? Okay, let me just check somebody else's. Okay. Uh, Ramon Enrique, could you please help us with this again? We're going to repeat. Hello, teacher. Anti-bias and diversity training. Diversity training, yeah. Okay, anti-bias, right? No. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and diversity training. Teach employees how to respectfully work with and around people from various backgrounds. Anti-bias and diversity training is type of soft skill, but it's now nuance, I don't know, mm -hmm. enough to fall under its own category. Uh -huh. Anti-bias in diversity training helps employees to understand that many background people come from and how to be responsible, respectful. For example, anti-bias in diversity training might cover how to ad, uh, advocate, advocate, advocate? Ad advocate, okay, advocate for those around you, how to report workplace uh, harassment, or uh -huh. be an an ally harassment harassment sorry harassment or be an ally and how to react if you witness any kind of this discrimination taking place in anti-bias in diversity training in Austin used is an a generation is in a no sorry is in a, a scenarios scenarios to show how certain Praise can be offensive to people of different backgrounds. Then, how those situations could have been handled better? Anti bias and diversity training should also present employees with interactive quizzes to ensure they are learning to the material. As this type of training is essential to create a creating a so a safe healthy workplace for all people good what did you get from that i don't know anti-bias <laughs> yeah bias is like um, a word that expresses when some people are annoying other people so they are like oh, okay. other people let's say okay and and but in that case, anti anti bully, right? uh, something like that. No, something like that. Very good. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. In in, in my in, let me see. In my area, my how do you say, gerente, manager, my leader. Manager or leader? Manager, manager is, is that one. Oh. Okay. My manager have a, a, a phrase to describe uh, that 
kind of anti-bias. Uh, he say, in this area, um, respect all, all interesting or kind of like, something like that. Um, básicamente, que respecta todos los las preferencias. <laughs> okay, yeah, you need to respect, right? And uh, okay, yeah, but there is a good idea. Uh, the bigger the company is, the better that you provide this kind of training because there are many people, different colors, different religions, different uh, different ways. I mean, and it's a very good idea to provide this kind of training. So I mean. Everybody respects themselves and they will be able to work nice, right? So th this is, what is that for, okay? So we check already what is bias and let's see some other words. What diversity, what is diversity? Anybody? Something or someone that is different, different ways to be. Very good. They are different ways of thinking or being, or they have different preferences on something, right? Good. And let's see. What is nuanced? Anybody? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <I'm just playing. laughs> but I know that the, the word. <laughs> the words, right. But okay. I don't know how to explain, even in the Spanish. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sometimes there are words that are difficult, the but word. that's why. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we do this exercise. So we are able to, to try to explain sometimes. Right? So nuance is like slightly different. So it's maybe similar to others, but it's also slightly different. That's what it says, but it's nuance enough to fall under its own category. So it's, it's something that is like a soft kill that it, you might say this is going to be part of other training, but it's nuanced enough. So it's also has some differences between other things that for, for, for us to deliver that as a different training, a whole train, right? Good. Uh, let's see, background people, let's see. To be an ally, what is that word? Someone that is um, in your team. <laughs> in okay. Your you, you can, can come with, with, with him. Someone you can rely on. Somebody on your same side. Very good. Perfect. Everybody's right. Nice. That is an ally. And what is a witness? To witness. To see or to watch something that passed uh, or, or who is happening. Very good. When you are there watching something to happen, right? You are a witness. Nice. What is discrimination? Anybody? When you not when, uh, when you are not the same or your behavior behavior uh, is not the same with uh, maybe in the case with with people okay uh, with some somebody or with some people you are uh, good and maybe for X reason. Uh, 
you are uh, evil or mean with another person, just only for a, maybe maybe a, for her skin color or something like that. Okay. Very good. When you believe the that. Way you treat. I'm sorry. The way you treat the person. The way that you treat other people okay, in a okay. negative way, right? So it's like when you believe that person is not good enough because of many reasons. So that is it. And actually that is very common. I mean, it's very common nowadays. Let's see if we can find another. Uh, I don't see any other. Okay. When to implement anti-bias and diversity training. Let's see. Uh, Danny, could you please help us with this? When to implement anti-bias and diversity training. Anti-bias and diversity training is essential. It's essential and it should be incorporated in onboarding training and may mandatory when new training are rolled out. Your company will likely have numerous types of employee training that fall under his category, his category, especially as different situations arise in both the workplace and the world. Very good, perfect. What did you get from this? Um, the, this has to be something mandatory in the company, and in, in onboarding training, and well, in both, in, in onboarding training and mandatory like the compliance in, in training. In, in the company, we'll have to, to um, I forgot the word, but in, in the company, there are many types or, 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 or any kind of people. And this, and this is the way that you are saying to your employees that you won't tolerate or allow um, this, the disrespectful or discrimination to the other people that is different from you. Very good, perfect. That is it, right? So, uh, well, should be incorporated on our board and training because all the employees, they need to know about this one, right? And it should be mandatory, so everybody has to pay attention to this one. Okay, I don't see any word. Actually, rolled out. What is to roll out? And something is in process. Something like that when it came out and it's in process. Okay. Yeah, when something, uh, in this case, the trainers are being delivered, right? Or developed. Okay, developed. Very good. Nice. And I don't see any other word. No. Okay, we're not going to check into that one, but we're going to, let me see. We're going to see a video. Yeah, this is funny. And uh, as usual, you are going to tell me comments, opinions about the video whenever we finish. So here we go, my friends. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about professions that are going to be in high demand in five and 10 years. And I'm also going to mention professions that have no future according to Forbes, Monster and Glassdoor. These are resources that I've researched for this video. So if you're interested what to do in five and 10 years, continue watching this video. Back to San Francisco. Our minds may change. A lot of professionals
professions are getting automated. We have Amazon Go here in San Francisco. People can check out without talking to others. They just go and uh, they're automatically built for what they have in their pockets. A lot of automobile companies are testing driverless taxis and driverless cars and trucks. So low level jobs are getting automated. Robot. What it means for us as human beings, it means that in the future we're gonna lose a lot of those low-level jobs, but it means that we have a lot more space for creativity. So today I'm gonna talk about markets that are gonna thrive. Market number one, medicine. Uh, oh, well, rainbow. <laughs> Openings on those markets have been growing really fast, 26% year over year. And if we compare 2010 with projections for 2020, we're going to get that there would be 700,000 more jobs. And this not only applies to doctors, and of course doctors are going to be in high demand, it also applies to people who take care of people who sit at home, like home care. Because we started to live longer. I just chatted to a guy here in San Francisco and he's in his 50s and he's like, I'm going to live till 180 years and he's doing his biohacking, he's uh, working on nutritious food that's gonna help you get all the vitamins, but this means that yes, we're gonna live longer and we're gonna need a lot more healthcare. Doctor. Second thing that is thriving on this market is IT in medicine. And yes, a lot of doctors' offices are getting automated. And yes, we can create some processes that are happening in our cells in a lab and watch how we can affect them. And there are also some magical things that are happening right now. There's this machine in Stanford called Da Vinci machine, and uh, you can perform a surgery without even being there. So it kind of cuts in the human being and does whatever needs to be done. And you can have a doctor here in the United States and that machine in Africa somewhere and the doctor from here will perform a surgery. And IT in medicine is also a huge market. It's gonna reach more than $100 billion in valuation in 2020 and it's growing 50% year over year. So if you're interested in that, first your career there, you're gonna have future 100%. Medicine. Market number two, creative professions. As I mentioned before, a lot of jobs are getting automated. All of the creative professions are gonna thrive because yes, we have AI, but it's not that developed yet. It cannot create awesome photographs. It cannot create awesome videos. It cannot edit videos. It cannot write text for you. Yes, it can do some kind of stuff, but it is not yet on a human being's level. So my dear photographers, vloggers, content creators, um, video editors, you're gonna have a lot of future and also like designers, architects. There's a huge future for those professions as well. And action. Profession number three, salespeople. At first I was surprised. There is so much technology that is automating sales. Um, my friend here, he created a company, ChatFuel, and they have automated bots. They're gonna sell you anything. But what research says is that we're looking for more individual care and chat bots cannot provide that yet because again, AI is not that developed. So salespeople have awesome skills in sale selling stuff. Your field is growing 16% year over year. And again, if we compare 2010 to 2020, we're going to have 700,000 more openings on those positions. Good thing for all of us guys is that a lot of professions that I'm mentioning in this video, if you have passion for them, if you have enough time, you can definitely learn them online. For all of the potential salespeople out there, I just found a course that is called Getting a Yes on a Platform called Skillshare. And Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, etc. And if you get their premium membership, you're gonna get unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields, and you can improve their skills and learn from somebody who's from that market not like somebody who just read a book and you know is telling you what to do I like that Skillshare has all of the creators that are professionals in what they're talking about Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there because an annual subscription is gonna get you unlimited access just for $10 a month and by the way there is a link below it's my exclusive link and 500 people who click it are gonna get two months for free. Industry number four uh, that is gonna need a lot of people is food industry. And yes, again, there are machines that are automating the processes in the industry. Um, I just met a guy who created Cafe X, and this is a cafe that is automated here in San Francisco. You click a button, you get your cup of coffee, you're done. And also there was this uh, startup in Y Combinator that created a machine that did sandwiches, but I think they shut it down. Anyways, there's this trend that some of the basic jobs are automated in the food industry, but there is also a trend that people are making more money. They 
they spend less time cooking, they spend more time going out and actually caring about what they eat. So nutritionists, um, good cooks, and people who can create amazing food and amazing restaurants, you're gonna be in high demand. Okay, come on, go, cook, 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 cook. Market number five, occupation number five, developers, like any developer, software engineer, app developer, um, UX, UI designer, product, uh, et cetera, whatever is connected with uh, coding and created products online, it's gonna be in high demand, because yes, there are still industries that are merging that are going from offline into online, and yes, we need to help them do that, and yes, we need a lot of professionals to do that. And by the way, these are really well-paid professionals. If you look at the American market, on average, software engineer would make like $100,000 a year. For this profession though, you would need a bachelor's degree and the projected growth, if we think of like 2016 and go to 2026, the projected growth is more than 36%. And also we're looking at projected of 1 million employment by 2026. Attractive, nice software. Mm. Market number six, and this is the market where I'm in, is education. And I would concentrate on post-secondary education, meaning that people are learning languages, people are learning different skills. And I think this traditional education, we just go to classes and follow the curriculum that is already set by somebody else, is fading away. Think of Finland, they've created this new school concept where kids don't just go to classes that teachers tell them to attend, they select what they want to do. If they want to sing, they can sing the whole day. If they want to construct something, then the school will provide resources for that. And Finland is like the top country for education in the world right now. And what I think is gonna be a trend in the future is that people would not just go to like standard school or standard you know, university to get their bachelor's, maybe they would even skip some stages and go straight into getting some skill, like one year course in photography, one year course in design or whatever, and go straight into workplace and get real life experience. Teachers will be in really high demand, but I would also emphasize that education is going online and online education market is growing at 15% year over year. So, and a lot of universities are publishing their courses online and a lot of teachers are creating their curriculum online. So I would say teachers who can bring their courses from offline to online are gonna thrive in the future. Yeah, who's teacher? There are also some professions that have unfortunately, well, according to Forbes, Monster and Glasser, have no future in the next 10 years. A lot of professions that are connected with agriculture and because yes, uh, a lot of them are gonna be automated. For example, farmers, ranchers, and other agricultural managers. Also, anything that is connected with post delivery, like postal services, mailmen, etc. And they are also mentioning some professions that are connected with data entry, because again, there are a lot of programs that can do that, and like data analysis. Uh, this can be done by a machine already. On the other hand, there are some professions that you cannot really learn right now, but they're gonna be in a huge demand in future. For example, drone operator. There are already so many drones, but I haven't seen like a comprehensive course in drone operating. But in the future, we're gonna have them everywhere and uh, we should not only navigate them, we should also build systems for them to, you know, coexist with us. Another profession is VR designer. I think you can already learn it, but the future of VR is that you can design something uh, like a spaceship and uh, people who are gonna go into space can train before they actually fly. Trash engineers are gonna be in huge demand because we have so much trash and we produce so much trash. We need to utilize it without damaging the earth. The next profession that I can think of is educational advisor because again, we're going away from this mass market education. We're going into more customizable curriculum. And if there is a person who you can talk to and who's gonna tell you, oh, hey, you will be good at this. You can take this and that course and uh, take an internship there. And then you go you're gonna be ready to conquer the market. So this kind of profession uh, will be really in high demand in terms of education. And the last thing that I wanted to mention is uh, a profession called a body slash organ creator. Brain. <laughs> I just chatted to my friend from MIT and what he's doing is that they're growing body parts in pigs because uh, pigs and humans are really similar <laughs> kind of. So they're taking uh, human's DNA, creating a liver in a pig and it's gonna be 100% compatible with that human. They haven't transferred it yet, but this is already what is going on. So people who are specializing in that area, 
that is a great area for 2020. That was it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, the red button is here. Click it and subscribe. If you like this video, please like it and let me know in comments down below. Okay, what did you get from this one? This video was realized and performance before COVID, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's kind of interesting though? So what, what did you get from this? Well, in my opinion, I guess that is playing, uh, playing a good, how can I say that? It's playing a good, is playing a good position the the artificial intelligence because every single uh, profession that she talk about uh, is according with that, and that could be a possible. Just that will be expensive too. Because you have to buy a really good equipment and also the scientists, you have to pay a lot for it. So it will be a possible, but maybe not soon. Okay. And also, you know that the, the, how can I say, how can I call the, the, um, let me see. The, um, well, uh, the robot, they have a, they are programmed, but we like human, we think what we have to do. So that's why I think that who happen, but maybe not soon. Very good, interesting. Actually, yes, I believe that there are things that are going to be possible to be automated, uh, things like analysis or uh, data entry, things like that definitely actually is happening. I mean, there are a lot of chatbots, there are a lot of things that are already working there, but the human touch, some things that, I mean, maybe even when people develop very good into uh, artificial intelligence, it's going to be not, not good because it doesn't have the sense, right? That warm of speaking with somebody that actually understands your feeling. So that is kind of difficult, right? Yeah, that's right. Very good, perfect. Any other opinion? on the video. Um, I understand from the video that in the future, um, the market will need perhaps no more, not that technician people. It's like more to related with operators, people who can uh, handle or manage the, the machines that that machine those machines will do the, the, the job for example in food and and dry and cars and medicine so i think we should uh, learn how to operate those machines and that and uh, that machine with our intelligence uh, with artificial intelligence. So um, I think, yeah, we should, we, we will need um, technician people, but it's more related with operators. Okay, very good. Yeah, definitely. Something, uh, have, sorry, go ahead. Something that surprised me is that the fact that in, the all that uh, all that the job of, uh, related to data that I know is something that is going is going to be 
well, a bad job uh, against all the all the uh, knowledge information that you could uh, find in the internet that about that that kind of um, of jobs that are telling you that the, this is the future, this is the future, but but this video say that it's not like that. Okay. Yes, actually, uh, what is very interesting uh, is that the market is changing, not only the market of devices or many things, but also the jobs market. So it's going to be totally different. So it's different right now, and it's going to be very, very different in 10 years, in 20 years. I mean, I was reading, for example, that in Spain, there is a girl that her job is uh, if you feel alone and you don't want to sleep alone she goes uh, to your place and she hugs you that's her job so i mean that is something that maybe here in el salvador we cannot pay for that one definitely but there are people in other countries that they feel different right they have different needs and they are willing to pay just because of something and uh there will be a lot of opportunities and definitely there would be things like the mailman, the mailman, yeah. If drones are going to be delivering, for example, in the future, your letters or, or if everything is going to be via email or a digital, we are not going to need mailman anymore, right? Any other opinion? no other opinions okay so we're going to do like a, a practice today today is free practice day so sometimes we discuss a topic and sometimes it's going to be individual so today is going to be better to start individual so it's going to be like a regular conversation it's going to be very very easy uh, the question is who wants to be the volunteer to start today Anybody wants? Nobody. Okay, very good. Hello, Roxanne. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. I'm tired, but everything is okay. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm dying here. But good thing is that we almost finished and we go to bed. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's the second day in the week. So, or not, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Well, today yeah. is Monday, so it depends on your work, of course. So. Seriously? Yeah, today is Monday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Nice. I think that today, yeah, I think that today was, um, to say yes, <laughs> yes. If only monday in mind. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> anyway so the good thing as i was telling you is that we're almost done and we're gonna go and sleep a little bit so we can yeah. go tomorrow again so and uh where do you live i live in Soyapango. do you know what is that I have never been there, but I know what is it. <laughs> okay, well, um, I live in uh, near to Santa Lucia. It's not a lot of dangerous here. Okay. It's, uh, I think that it's dangerous near to um, in Centro Soyapango. Okay. But uh, in my case, I live to um, close to. Um, Cárcel de Mujeres. Ah, okay. Uh, women so it's, jail. Yeah, women jail. Um, so I am too close to Ilopango. It's ah, okay, a good. little safe. 
So how long you does know, it take? Uh, go ahead. No, you know, when, when uh, well, in my case, when I say that I live in Soyapango, everybody is, I don't know, afraid? I will never visit you. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. That's why I try to explain that in my place is not a lot of dangerous, I guess. Okay, so we can visit you. <laughs> good. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that is really good. And uh, I was going to ask you, how long does it take for you to, to go from your house to, to the airport in Ilopango? Well, I, the last time I, I saw that I spent around 10 minutes without traffic. 10 minutes. You know, yeah, but here um, I have uh, some schools or some um, bodegas, how do you say bodegas? Warehouse, warehouses. Warehouse, yeah. So that's why uh, in my um, main street, sometimes there is a lot of traffic because uh, there are some um, school transportations or um, furgones. Like trucks. Trucks, yeah. But without traffic, sometimes uh, I spend around Fifth minutes. My mother works near to um, Zona Franca. Do you know what is that? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I always uh, well, it's it's my it's my way because uh, sometimes I go to my I, I go to the al trabajo de mi mamá. I went I went yo uh, no, I go I to go my to mother's mom. work. Uh -huh. So my mother works because uh, she uh, sometimes finish her work around 8 p.m. and I need to get her to her work and go home. And I sometimes I spend around five to minute. It depends. The traffic. Oh, that, that is that is kind of close. That's very good. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was asking you because I remember that I read and I would like to do something like that. I read that from there, from the airport in Milopango, there are some tours that you can take in a small yes. airplane. So uh, so what do you Did know you about that them? one? I would like to actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I well, uh, when my son has uh, activities in the um, auditorium, mm -hmm. I can see a lot of uh, mini airplane, air, air, air plane? planes. Planes, huh? There, planes. Yeah, I say mini because you know it's just for four or five people. Yeah. Yeah, and there is has a how do you say? Um, Cuando se tiran, no sé cómo se, se me ah, ha ido el, el parachute. They, they do parachute. Yes, yes, paracaídas. Yeah. Yeah, the last time I was uh, watching something like that, it's very interesting. Okay. And did you notice, I don't know if that was possible, but did you notice if they were individual or they jumped two people together? Well, the last time I was watching that there there was a, there were two people. Two people, right, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I heard that one, that is, it's not that you are going to wear your parachute and you jump because it's dangerous, right? So there is like a, yes. an expert with you and you yes. go with the expert and you just scream and, and leave the experience and they handle everything. Yeah, in that, in that time, uh, my, well, one of my friends, has the experience and she told me that uh, she wants to be alone but uh, you know they give the explain but they try to uh, stay with you because you know it's, it's complex yeah it's, it's dangerous i mean they cannot yes. 
I mean, say my client died, right? <laughs> so yeah, <it's> not, good. <laughs> not good at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm planning to go there to, to take the tours. That's the first thing that I would like to do, and maybe then the parachuting. So I will research and see what the prices are. And for me, it's going to be a long ride because I am in Santana. Okay. Yeah, you are. You are far. Um, far, far away, but yeah. Maybe that is the reason why I haven't done that yet because it's far away and well, I have to, to take the whole, the whole day for doing that activity, right? But in general, do you enjoy the, this type of activities? Yeah, yeah, I enjoy that kind of activities, yeah. Okay, well, in my case, I, I try to be, I don't know, Tranquila en la tierra o okay. algo así. <laughs> Relax when your feet are on the land. Yeah. Well, I remember that the last time I was visited a place there in Santa Ana. I don't remember the, the name, but they has a bicycle in cables. So, bicicletas en cable. Okay. And I dislike it. I, to be honest, I prefer uh, eat something and watch the people and that's it. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the most extremely activities that I, I, I did was um, in a lake. Uh, I took, um, is it not? was a, a boat it's similar i don't remember the name but uh, when i stayed with my best friend we paid for a tour and we just um, stayed in around the lake with her and with the other person and just I don't know, we are there and we we didn't have a um, chaleco. Okay, side goal. No teníamos chaleco. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, I think, I imagine that it was the most extremely activity that I, I did. Okay, interesting. So you will never do anything like that? No, 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 never. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good, nice, nice to know. Perfect, eh, Roxanne. It was a pleasure talking with you. So interesting. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else who would like to give it a try just to speak? Another person. Speak right, what? I'm sorry? I think I'm a what? Yeah, it's just a practice, it's just a free speech practice. Okay. Okay, let's let's do it then. Hey, how are you? So far, so good. What about nice. you? <laughs> I'm so tired today, you know, very, very tired. But I really, I really enjoy to be here with you. So it's very good. I, I'm really happy. So and where do you live? I live in Santa Tecla. Ah, that's nice. So yeah, you nice are to plus Amarillo. Ah, okay, very good. So you're very close to many places there, so that's good. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, if you want to eat something uh, late, you can do it. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. That, that is the place, right? You can go anywhere there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also if you want to go to the supermarket, you could go until 11 p.m. In my 11, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. So I, guess that, huh? I guess that is it is a good location. Good, yeah, I, I guess that is very nice. So, and uh, speaking of going out at night, uh, what are the best places to go at night there? If you want to have fun? And... I don't know, that depends on what kind of fun do you want. Because... I mean, maybe to eat something that is nice and unique. Uh, maybe Charlie Boy. Charlie Boy is really near to my house. It's like three blocks, I guess. Ah, okay. I know yeah. where you live then because I've been there. <laughs> yeah, and 
you know, Charlie Boy has a, a really big, really large or really length menu. Okay, a large menu. A large menu where you can choose whatever what you want. And also you can bring whatever what you want. If you drink a beer, if you, oh, well, if you drink a alcohol or if you want to drink um, a soda or water, you can do it. Okay, Charlie Boy. So yeah, I have I have tried that food and it's very good. Yeah, actually it's very yeah. nice. If you want to eat something like pizza, hamburger, or something hamburger. like that. If yeah. not, you can go uh La Gran Via or even to Multiplaza. Okay, yeah, they have a lot of the, the good thing is that you can find almost anything there, right? Yeah, that's right. You can choose whatever you want. Very yeah, good. that's right. Or if not, you can go to eat some tacos. Okay. Yeah. And uh, is there a place where you can eat like foreign food? Like for example, Pakistani food, or I know that there is a place that is a Korean food, but it's not that. Close. Maybe, maybe, uh, well, that kind of food. It's not nearly, but you can go third is Hunam. The name is Hunam. It, that is near to the uh, circle, Mas Ferrer Circle. Ah, okay. Yeah, right there is one place that has a lot of uh, food or uh, from Asia. Ah, okay. So it's like Asian cuisine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, interesting. I never heard about the place. Maybe I'm going to research and go. Yeah. Once right. I have a chance. Yeah, it has a lot of level and different level. Uh, is a different restaurant. Uh, the first level, I guess, that you can find uh, sushi is then you can find in the second level uh, Korean. And then on the third one, I guess that you can find uh, Chinese food. Okay, sounds good. So, because there are many things that you can choose from. Yeah, that's right. Have you ever tried that that food? Yep, yep. You're, I, I went with my wife to try the Chinese food. Okay, so it's highly recommended. Yeah, it's highly recommend. Very good, perfect. So I'm going to write it down and then I'm gonna go and check it. Yeah, when you have the opportunity to come here, you could visit. Definitely, it would be nice to go and try that. Okay, thank you, Alfredo. I oh, will, Alfredo, I'm sorry. Oh, don't worry, teacher. Okay, perfect. Okay, my friends. So this was the class of today. Sometimes we're going to do this little practice whenever we have the time just to, to practice and speak about whatever you want. Sometimes we're going to discuss in general. I'm going to bring some topics so we can discuss. And uh, is there any question before we finish? Okay, if there is no question, we're going to check the attendance, of course, and then we can go and sleep a little bit. So let's see. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Ebran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. 
Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. For you is the 101 today, Maria Alejandra. Okay, teacher. Ramón Enrique okay. Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect, my friends. It was a pleasure to be with you. Have a good night. Rest very well and dream in English. See you tomorrow. Thank you, teachers. See you tomorrow. Good night, good night everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Hello, how are you? Hello, teacher. I'm fine. And you? So <laughs> tired, but I'm happy to be here with you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So the first question I have for you is how do you feel that you are moving on with the classes? Do you feel that you're learning, that you're getting something? Yes. I think that the, is a very different uh, the previous uh, courses because I have uh, the same teacher uh, for all the courses that I did. <laughs> oh, <in> my. <laughs> and and the, the book is different. It's not this, it's the, um, uh, how do you say that? The guidelines or Oh, the instructor, I don't know, is very different because in that the other courses I have a conversation and I repeat a lot of conversations or <laughs> like yeah. this. Um, but I like it. Um, I like to have a, the, uh, you did a different exercise, for example, when you did um, the, a spell it or no, no, spell it, no. The dictation. A the detection, uh huh. And um, I like to read the different paragraphs because I think that in the other person don't have the opportunity to speak and read a, a big paragraph or the different topic. And I, I think that it, the vocabulary is more as easier to talk for topping you read in the moment and you talk for the, the other topic that you don't have a idea that or that word you you use and i think that i hear the other uh, uh, students and I hear that all use a different vocabulary and the other courses, I think that, how do you say that? I, how do you say that? And I can finish that, that sentence or complete sentence. Okay, very good. That is like nice. That <laughs> nice. And uh, do you have any question, anything that you may want to check uh, with me? Uh, with the platform or the book or the previous classes or grammar that you would like to check? Um, in this moment, I only work in uh, the, the first week for uh, the platform. Okay. I try to work in uh, the second week, um, this, uh, maybe today or tomorrow. But in this moment, I don't have a question. I like it. I like the topics. I like you use a different example. And I think that I have the opportunity to hear uh, in a different person's uh, English for the videos or like this. And in my case, I don't have the opportunity to do in uh, the other level. OK. Mm -hmm. well, nice. <laughs> I'm very happy that you're happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Also remember that if you have questions, you can uh, you can ask any question in the class or you can chat with me directly or in the group. So we can check anything that you may want to check. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Okay, uh, just to finish, what is the I mean there are different speech uh, parts of speech. So do you believe 
uh, what is the most difficult for you to speak, to read, to listen, to read? I mean, I think that read because I think that I have a problem. I remember that word, but I forgot to read a uh, correct. Um, and I missing a letters, or I remember or that know that word, but I don't remember that right. Mm, I think I think that I better do when I learn because you see the words, and I think that my problem is, or I improve to in a hear and to a detect a dictation or when I write. Okay, the good thing is that you know that one, so you need to start working, so you are going to improve that one, of course. Yes, uh huh. But I know because uh, you or you give me the opportunity to uh, find it or encontrarla, no sé. Find. <laughs> to find, uh huh, because I don't know what the other teachers say me when I don't. I can speak a lot of because <laughs> I don't remember a lot of words, but I think that when uh -huh, that explain that when you uh, learn or you or you see a different paragraph, you see the words and it's better to know and, and uh, formulate or formulate. I formulate a sentence or that the brain uh, work better. <laughs> okay. But you're doing a, a very good job. I mean, I really like the way that you read and you express yourself. So that's nice. Okay, teacher. But I try to improve um, participation and I try to participate more. Definitely. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Maria Alejandra. So it was a pleasure to be with you. I hope you have a very good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Good night. Okay. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.